Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to uh, explain what that you're looking at right here. It's a solar distiller and I'm going to walk you through each thing that you see here and tell you what its purpose is and how to install it. So let's get right into it. Oops, well, that's all right. Open Blender. That's what I use and we're not going to need this. So I'll just make that small. You know what? I think I can... There we go. Alright. So here you have it. This blue stuff here is water. It's just to represent water. Um, this bucket, and this is just a regular Home Depot bucket, would be your intake. You would fill it with whatever water, tap water, find a way to divert rainwater into it though that's becoming increasingly illegal in most states it's ridiculous but anyway you know I'm kind of a rebel I think I might collect rainwater and just uh, dare them to do something about it this black you see well let's start off by saying uh, just making sure everybody knows what distilling means when you distill water, all you're effectively doing, and everybody has distilled water. If you've if you've uh, made noodles for spaghetti, you've distilled water. All that steam on the lid, that's distilled water. Um, and that's all you have to do to distill water is get it to evaporate. Now, the way this thing functions quickly is this is glass or plexiglass um, now the water sits in here rotate X alright the water comes in here sits in the bottom this will be closed now this uh, the light can travel through this and it will heat up because water's clear it's not really blue um, and this black rubber, this is pond liner, and it's probably the best thing to use. You could probably use uh, any kind of plastic, um, uh, like drop cloth plastic. It's usually that's usually clear or uh, white, but you may be able to find some black. Basically, you need black, something big enough to cover this and this entire whatever you build, this square basin is what I call it with no holes in it okay I, I, the pond liner is the best bet and uh, I have a couple of these open here is some pond liner and it looks it'll look like this and it's like some heavy-duty rubber um, this is a great deal on some a four by six foot uh, flat sheet of it 20 mil which is more than enough it doesn't matter how thick it is I mean if, if you have money to throw around get it thicker but uh, if not it really doesn't matter but its purpose is uh, twofold first off it holds the water in here and keeps it from seeping into the wood the wood is just used as a frame it doesn't come into contact with any water it doesn't get wet other than if it rains um, though I would get treated wood and then seal it because wood warps when it's in the sun this black rubber is it serves two purposes it it holds the water in there well three actually it's black so it conducts a lot of the sunlight um, I've seen contraptions like this uh, that don't utilize any kind of a they'll, they use stuff like paint inside like a ceiling paint that's uh, black which is good but wood doesn't retain heat very well it's a poor conductor um, rubber is not a good conductor either but I have worked with this stuff and I laid this in the grass one time to cut it and within under a minute it had burned the grass completely killed all the grass in under a minute just from the sun hitting it it got so hot that I had to go buy gloves to handle it I mean it was easily over 200 degrees it's better than just painting the wood uh, black with a sealer so it conducts the heat it holds the water in make sure it doesn't leak and it works as a gasket you would 
pull it up and fold it over the edge where this right here will okay well this will close and it works as a gasket to make this uh, more or less airtight all right now these little things you you see in here these little bolts these are called hanging bolts and you, you've probably seen them with a hook on them you know to hang plants from the ceiling but these are just straight and let me show you what they look like in real life uh, right here no 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 ah, here we go okay they look like that now there's like a there's a special nut that you get and it probably costs like five bucks I don't know um, that would screw onto it and allow you to drive that into the wood you put this part in the wood this part would go through holes in the plexiglass over here and then you would get a wing nut and tighten this down you want this to be as airtight as possible because uh, the steam if it escapes it'll you'll lose uh, condensation off of this plexiglass and it's just not good it's better if it's sealed um, one thing to note is that I've made this whole thing at an angle you see it's straight across here but it goes down it slopes so that when the steam comes up it's going to hit this glass and it's going to roll down the glass and then let me rotate on X alright you see this pink violet thing that's the only part that I you'd have to improvise on it this is like a I call it a drip guard but what it does is the drops would run down this without this they would run all the way to the edge and then just roll down the black rubber and back into the water but this thing makes them when it hits it they will zoom in on it they'll come down hit this go right to the peak of it and then drip down and when they drip down they will land into this PVC that has got the top part cut all, cut away and it slopes it's hard to see but see how it comes up in the middle but the top needs to be cut out then when the water drips it drips into here and then it will run down into this through this PVC into your collection bucket and this would be distilled pure H2O alright these uh, these red things are called bulkhead fittings and they allow you to go through the wall of a anything and creates an air watertight uh, coupling all right let me show you what that looks like in real life right here these are bulkhead fittings you see this nut this big nut on it that screws off and in the middle there are these rubber gaskets on either side so when you tighten it down, the only way anything can get out is through the inside tube. And what you'll do is you'll get a PVC fitting, and I'm not going to go through all the PVC fittings. PVC is really simple. If you go to the PVC section of Home Depot, it's like Lincoln Logs for adults. It's, it's really simple. And if you have any trouble, you just grab one of those uh, Home Depot people and ask them to help you. Tell them what you're trying to do and uh, you just assemble it you know you'll find a fitting that will screw onto this and connect to the PVC that way the only way that water can get in and out is through that drip basin or through that uh, through this channel right here okay now we've explained all that this is a uh, this is just a PVC coming from the bucket and the way you're going to connect this is not with a bulkhead fitting because it's round and it won't get a good seal and I would use a smaller PVC for this maybe half inch this would be three quarter inch the reason I say half inch is because if it's too big the pressure from all this water is going to make this basin fill too high 
the more water you have in here, the longer it's going to take to get warm enough to condensate on this lid. So you kind of want to keep this at a low level. But it will keep replenishing because the weight of this water is going to keep pushing this in. But as soon as the water fills up past the line, past the PVC, it's going to stop. My guess is if you're interested enough to even watch this video, then you can probably work a lot of this out yourself. Um, um, that's your bulkheads. Um, let me explain how this lid is connected. The lid is connected with a piano hinge. And if you don't know what a piano hinge is, it is this thing right, yeah, right here. Get that bigger so you can see it. And everybody's seen a piano hinge. You just may not know what it's called. It comes with screws and everything. It's like eight, ten bucks, something like that. Don't ten forty-seven. And that is how this is connected. If I zoom in, you can see that I made a rough approximation of one right here. And you see the uh, ones connected to the plexiglass. You would drill little holes in here and then screw the screws in. You would put the black rubber over the one you screw to the wood. Because when it closes, you're going to want... Well, now that I think about it, if you do that that's probably not a good idea. If you do that you're going to leave a gap all along the side. Anyway, the goal is to seal it as, as, as best you can. If you find that this uh, rubber over this hinge is creating a gap, cut it. You know? Um, I think it probably would. I wouldn't put it over the hinge now that I think about it. It'll be good enough just right here. It's a lot easier to fix in this program than it will be at home but there you go see that's gone anyway there we go with that um in the construction of this the bottom this green stuff is grass the construction of this uh is just a piece of plywood however big however big you want it the bigger it's the bigger it is, the more it's going to make, the more it's going to cost. This plexiglass is not cheap. Um, I would look to spend quite a bit on it, at least 50 bucks for a piece of plexiglass that is uh, like four, four foot or yeah, four foot by three foot, something like that. It's going to cost you like 50 bucks. Um, a cheaper method to do it would be to drape this whole thing with plastic. Now it's going to be harder to get your little drip thing connected to plastic, but you know, I have faith in uh, people's ingenuity. I know I could do it with a piece of plastic. Um, all you'd really need is you could drape plastic over this whole thing and then get something that's like uh, a dowel stick and just lay it over the plastic right where this is at and that would make enough of a bump that it would drip into there okay uh, we have gone through that now this like I told you this rubber stuff you could use a black trash bag um, this wood all, all it is is these side things all the sides are like five by eight by one inch wood and you probably need two eight foot uh, links and then you just cut them with a slope. I would cut both sides at the same time when you do the slope so that it's perfect. Uh, this will take some woodworking skill. Um, these are just two by fours. And I would screw from the inside out when you're connecting this and then lay the rubber. Don't screw through the rubber. You don't want any holes in the rubber other than these little spike things, which is unavoidable. Um, the bottom is plywood and that's just whatever however big you want to make it that's how big you need your plywood you know and you can cut that down on a table saw or with a skill saw which is a pretty cheap tool a lot of people have or you can borrow it um, and that's uh, that's really just it it's not it's not complicated at all um, 
but at the end of this video I'll put a picture with little arrows that tell you what everything is um, and this thing this cube that's just a cube <laughs> that could be anything a table I just uh, I just put it there for something to set this on but other than that that will distill water and as for how much I don't know but um, it would now one other thing if you want to spend more money actually you may not spend that much more money because uh, check this out you got this thing called a Fresnel lens uh, right here and these are great people on YouTube uh, green power science they do a lot of stuff like this and they're awesome you ought to check them out if you're interested in this kind of stuff but the way this thing works is it's like a magnifying glass they use they were first used in lighthouses to magnify the light that's being shined out of the lighthouse but uh, you've seen them in uh, old big screen TVs and they basically magnify. Now the focal uh, length on these is pretty far away. It's several feet. And what I mean by focal length is like whenever you burn ants with a magnifying glass, you want to get that really small dot of light. Uh, that won't happen if you put it on top of this. But you will get magnification of the sun, which will make your inside of this much hotter. One of these is is much better than just plexiglass, and actually for eighty bucks, I know that's a lot of money, but uh, you know for a do-it-yourself kind of thing, but for eighty bucks, that's a great price. That's that's really worth it. It's I if I had the money, I would buy that over the plexiglass. But um, you can also find these. Like I said, it's a big old big screen TVs are Fresnel lenses, and you can if you can find one of those you got yourself a Fresnel lens uh, they're kind of flimsy so you will need to uh, make a frame like sorry I keep doing that keep clicking off of here making things jump but you would need to frame it out to give it some stability and then if uh, you're gonna do it on this you would probably want to wrap the sides in rubber or something something to make it wood doesn't seal well if you try to make wood push down on rubber it's it'll seal but wood warps especially when it's in the presence of anything damp it will just it'll start the it'll you'll start losing air out of here through little tiny uh, warped bumps in the wood so I think that pretty much wraps it up if you leave your uh, if you have any questions uh, just leave them below and I'll do my best to explain or make another video but I uh, hope that helps let me let you look at some of the pictures these are rendered I forgot to, when I moved this that the lid was not connected but uh... There. And there's the channel that's cut out of this I would try to find a way to make it bow in the middle I'm not sure how to do that. You know, you could always just cut it, put a cut a cut almost all the way through it, and then lift it up and find some way to fix it in that position. Maybe put a screw in the wood. I mean, you could poke one hole in the rubber, and it won't make a big difference at all. I mean, you'll lose a little bit of water, but you're going to lose a lot of water anyway. A lot of distilled, condensated water is going to drip back into this water. You know, it's it's a process. Um, you're just trying to catch as much as humanly possible. Um, yeah, I would try to slope this, or else you're going to get a lot of it it's just going to fall in here and set and evaporate again, and it slows the whole process down. So you're going to want this stuff to run off. And one more thing I didn't cover is you see these these are elbows, two elbows per side. There's two right here, and then this is a Y connector but you want all this from this point all the way around to be at a at, at a uh, angle angle down so that the water runs and doesn't pool anywhere you want it to, to constantly be running all the way down into here you may find that you need to poke a very very small hole in the top of this or this no you know i don't think it would be an issue here 
but to let air in. Because when the water leaves here, it's going to create a vacuum. And if there's no air to fill up this uh, thing right here, the water will stop coming out of here. It'll just stay in here, no matter what. If air can't get in here, because this is going to be more or less airtight. But you, it's not going to be perfect, so it's probably going to let enough air in to let this water flow. So you may not have to poke a hole at all, but if you run into an issue where your water's not coming out, it's because you need to poke a little hole right here. But, uh, well, thanks for watching. Sorry this video got so long and kind of rambly, but I think that's it. All right, I'll see you next time.